Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Plus, and welcome to Monday Night Raw. Finally, we are back on Monday nights where the red brand belongs, but this one's going to be havoc. It's not going to be any kind of havoc. It's going to be Halloween havoc because it is Halloween. Happy Halloween to everybody watching at home live today as we are getting to you guys with one hell of an episode of Raw here tonight as Survivor Series is still on demand. It being our most recent pay-per-view here in Universe Mode. You can go check it out. But later on tonight, guys, it is going to be Darby Allen and Sting. We are going to hear from them right here tonight in Nashville, Tennessee as they have a lot to get off their chest. And this right here is going to be a true judgment for Will or Yuta as Yuta is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Claudio Castanoli and that's not all ladies and gentlemen we are going to hear from the first ever WWE champion here in Universal Mode, Kevin Owens and he is going to be having a uh, live interview that's one's going to be interesting but ladies and gentlemen the Hurt Business 2.0 are going to be going against the Lucha Bros who's going to be the newest member find out later tonight and in your main event it's a blockbuster one it's Solo versus Wardlow Listen, man, I need you in top, top shape tonight. This is going to be the first time we're going to be on Raw in a very long time. And I promised Adam Pearce that we were going to show up and show out tonight. And I promised Adam Pearce that we were going to deliver. And deliver we shall. Now, in your corner here, it's going to be me, of course, MVP. And over here behind me, we have the almighty Bobby Lashley. Now, Cedric, I know you're wondering who your partner is going to be tonight. Don't worry about it. What I want you to do is focus on you. Focus on what makes you a good wrestler. Matter of fact, don't even worry about it tonight. Worry about two weeks when we're facing the Usos for the Tag Team Championships. Because that is exactly what we are going to go from here. We're going straight to the top and we're going right after the Tag Team Championships. And then FTR... They're going to be facing us at Raw Anniversary, and it's going to be Raw finishing off this season at the end of the year, WrestleMania, and it's going to smell so damn good for the Hurt Business. The same way it should have started here in Universe Mode is going to be the same way it's going to end, and in two weeks' time, we're going to take on Legato, because we got a score to settle with them, too, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot going on, but that's stuff for me and Bobby to worry about. You, focus on you. Do what you got to do. I got your partner. You'll see him soon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back out here in Nashville, Tennessee. And what we promised to open up Raw, what we promised the WWE Universe AEW's world champion is here. And his name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Ladies and gentlemen, it's MJF, this one's gonna be damn good as last week the American Nightmare called out MJF and, and basically said, listen, I miss gold around my waist, I miss being the champion that I once was and I think it will be so, oh, poetic if I beat my student in a matchup at the Clash of the Champions. Ladies and gentlemen, this one's gonna be damn good, ladies and gentlemen. This one is going to be interesting to say the least. We can either get him to accept the challenge or in MJF fashion, cut him down to size. This one's gonna be very interesting. So this is what the world wanted. The world wanted to hear from the devil. The world wanted to hear from Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Let me tell the world a story. Let me tell the world a story about a man known as Maxwell Jacob Friedman, a man who is AEW World Champion, a man who is on the run of his career, a run of the century, and he gets stopped to come to this shithole known as the WWE. Oh, 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 I suck. I suck because I'm telling you guys the truth. I suck because I'm telling you guys what nobody else is going to tell you guys. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Well, let's show you just how much of a sheep you really are. Okay. All right, well, let me come out here and do what I said I was going to do. Cody Rhodes. You see, now we're back on track. Roadster. It's been a while now, hasn't it? The student meets 
the teacher. Once again, is that the story that we're running with going into Clash of Champions, Cody? Listen, but if you wanted a match, all you had to do was ask. After all, like you said, like the story you're trying to make, it's, it's not a story, it's the truth. You are the teacher. You taught me everything that I needed to know when it comes down to the art of this business, when it comes down to the art of uh, sports entertainment because let's not make no mistake about it Cody when it comes to the side of professional wrestler I have been that face long before you ever were when you were out destroying kingdoms painting your face to be some type of stardust I was doing big things I was being molded to become the next big thing and I may have not been all over the spotlight all over the place but I like I said before was being prepared to become the greatest wrestler that the world has ever seen and that I am Cody that I am I'm putting on bangers with Kenny Omega I'm putting on bangers with Rock Hard Juice Robinson I'm doing things that only you wish you would be able to do in this business and now because you can't win your title because you can't beat your prince you decide to come after moi <laughs> Cody you want a match, you got a match. What? He's giving him the match. Is it confirmed? AE dump. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's the American Nightmare. The former World Heavyweight Champion. It's Cody Rhodes. Rhodes is here for MJF as he threw the gauntlet down and MJF just answered the challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, November 26th, Clash of Champions, it's official. And what a way to make it all go down unlike any other right here on Halloween Havoc. And this Nashville, Tennessee crowd is absolutely ecstatic for what's to come here tonight. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you what's to come. And what's coming down that ring right now is the man himself, Cody Rhodes, as he is making a march right to the face of MJF. And MJF seems to be backing off a little bit. As these two men, oh, oh my goodness. Look at this. The intensity staring between two, student and teacher, teacher and student, whichever way you want to word it, that is the situation that we are in, but we're not looking at the student MJF, we are looking at the devil, but the big question is, is the roadster on the level of the devil? Oh, oh man, oh man, Cody wants a microphone, this one's going to heat up. Thank you, Max. That was easy for the most part. It seems a little too easy when it comes down to you. Now, I know we have been through all types of good, all types of bad, but going into this matchup, the exact groundwork that was laid out. Now, I want that to be the story because that is what it is. I don't want to sit here and put up some type of hatred for you to impress anybody at the end of the day we went through what we went through but my respect for you is unremarkable the respect i have for you and what you've done for that championship is absolutely amazing but it's my turn it's my turn to show the world that i'm the best it's my turn to show the world that i can be the game-changing superstar that i've set out to be since i arrived here in the wwe and what way that'll be by taking the aew championship the championship to a brand that i helped build and i bring it to the brand that i am back to prove myself in once again now what a crossover that'll be and i want it to last longer than seven weeks you can get in my face, you can pretend to hate me all you want, but the fact of the matter still remains, and that is I owe you an ass whooping, and an ass whooping you will get November 26th Sunday. It's only going to be me and you in the ring, and it's going to be for the prize that I have all so wanted since I made the company known as AEW, and that is... That is that World's Heavyweight Championship, the belt that you call a Triple B, I will bring back, and I will bring the prestige back that it deserves. 
You've done great things with it. But I can do better. As announced earlier this week on the channel, AJ Styles, John Moxley, Johnny Gargano, and Jay White will be in fatal four-way action for the Money in the Bank contract, and it all goes down next Monday right here on Raw, 6 p.m. It's going to be good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Raw is all over the place, we finally cleared the ring, and oh, man. It is time to see the Shields in action once again, but this time in the form of the muscle, this time in the form of the Swiss Superman, known as Claudio Castanoli. And look at this, the Shields all fun and games here tonight as last week. It was the Shields taking a little bit of an interest in one Wheeler Yuta, and this is the matchup that we see here tonight. We do know John Moxley is in the back. He wants to uh, watch this matchup from afar he doesn't want to get the um, you know the up and close experience he wants to get more of a TV view experience and he wants to let the guys go out here and get the job done when you look at a guy like John Moxley he's gonna be having his hands full as next week as we just seen over the commercial break he is gonna be one participant in that fatal four-way ladder match for the money in the bank as we have a vacant money in the bank and we knew we knew need a new mr. money in the bank and it can either be AJ Styles Jay White the man himself Johnny wrestling or it could be John Moxley and us knowing and looking at all those different guys, looking at all the momentum that they all hold. I would personally say that John Moxley holds all the momentum. John Moxley is the only guy who has a continuing strain of victories, uh, unlike any of the other three participants. And on top of that, John Moxley is the only man in the WWE to hold two pins over Roman Reigns. Whether they clean or not, they're pins. But ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Wheeler Yuta. Speaking more on what I was talking about over last week, we've seen you know, Wheeler Yuta had a crazy matchup with the Assassin and J.D. McDonough. And J.D. McDonough had a test in the Judgment Day in a test he successfully you know got the job done and it wasn't the greatest WWE debut for Wheeler Yuta but in this crossover we're gonna get some wins we're gonna get some losses it happens sometimes but how Wheeler Yuta's night ended I would argue gave him the ultimate win with John Moxley the self-proclaimed leader of the show taking a bit of an interest in John and uh, Wheeler Yuta so it's gonna be very interesting to see here tonight whether this one goes you know how this one goes it seems like the shield are very high on Wheeler Yuta and see the potential that this young man can bring to the group. But the big question is, is he a match for one of the strongest members of the Shield, Claudio Castanoli? As Castanoli only has a couple of matches under his belt since coming back to the WWE after his injury at the SummerSlam pay-per-view when he was in our first ever Money in the Bank matchup. And wait a minute now, look at this. Claudio Castanoli setting up early here. Big bomb here to Yuta. Oh my God. Two and no. Right when you think that it's going to be over. I mean, listen to this crowd. This crowd is just absolutely ecstatic and seems to be just excited that Will Ayuda and Claudio Castanoli are facing each other. But look at that. The king of the UFO, Claudio Castanoli. And look at Castanoli once again slapping off Yuta and a big cap kick there by Castanoli. Castanoli not playing any games here tonight with Will Ayuda as Yuta coming in. Still an AEW superstar coming in under a contract here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank everybody once again for coming here to Halloween Havoc. It is an interesting event, to say the least, to celebrate Halloween. And wait a minute now, look at Claudio Castanoli picking up Wheeler Yuta. You know, the Shield have one motto, if you bleed with us, you can fight with us. But tonight, will Wheeler Yuta face that same fate? Oh, man, Yuta goes down hard with a suplex there. The architect, Seth Rollins, seems like he has a bit of a plan when it comes down to... Wait a minute, wait a minute, early on? Early on? Neutralizer! Was not expecting that early on in the matchup. It's definitely over. Good night, Yuta. Thanks for coming. No. Was this that passion? Was this that fight? Was this that heart that John Moxley seen in Wheeler Yuta in his debut last week against JD McDonough? Man, Yuta, man, I don't want him to go 0 for 2, but either way, he's showing a whole lot of fight and a whole lot of heart. And look at this, Yuta now. Look at it. Turn it around. A Castanoli, but gets hit with a suplex. One. Two and no beautiful kick out there by Will or Yuta and as he kicks out ladies and gentlemen We're gonna go right on commercial break When mayhem returns the Friday night's DIY returns the heart and soul will be back live on the wrestling show known as Friday night mayhem see you guys this 6 p.m. Eastern time. It's gonna be a damn good time. I'll see you then
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the commercial break, and over the commercial break, Wheeler Yuta was able to turn it around for himself just a little bit in this matchup. And look at this, Yuta trying to fight back, but Claudio seems to be just a little too much. I eat my words there. My white stinger splash. Speaking about the singer, we're going to hear from him later tonight along with his constituent Darby Allen. And oh man, look at that. Once again, Wheeler Yuta turning up the heat here. And now Claudio goes to hit him with a big haymaker there. But Wheeler Yuta moves out of the way, looks to pick up the Superman. The Swiss Superman goes down hard. One, two, and no. There it is. Yuta giving us a little bit of fight back over the commercial break. And now leading on as we are back. And oh man. Hanging on to those clotheslines, making sure he follows through with every which one. That's exactly woo, what you're going to want to see from Wheeler Yuta. But look at that, Claudio Castanoli being a bit of a difference maker here for Wheeler Yuta here tonight. Wheeler looks to be hurt, and oh man, slap to the head there by Claudio Castanoli. Castanoli looks to pick up Yuta once again, but Yuta once again having that scouted. And now Yuta back up to his feet, and oh man, oh man, Yuta looks to choke him out. Yuta wants him out. Yuta wants him out. Is Claudio going to sleep? Is Claudio going to sleep? Will this be Yuta's night? Will dreams come true for Will or Yuta, but in the expense of the Swiss Superman? Oh man, oh man, Yuta has no choice but to let go. And look at this, Yuta now just throwing all types of haymakers at Claudio Castanova. Look at this, look at this, the numbers game. What the hell is Rollins doing? What the hell is Rollins doing? Rollins getting in the way of what was a perfectly good, easy victory for Will or Yuta. Yuta though, gets caught, gets caught, neutralizer. Wheeler Yuta might have just got schooled when it comes down to the numbers game here tonight. And look at that. With a smile on the Shield's face. And Rollins laughing at Claudio saying he almost had you. He almost had you. It seems like the Shield taking this one more as a game. But I can definitely see them in a weird way sort of testing the strength of Wheeler Yuta. I would argue that Wheeler Yuta wasn't set to win this one from the beginning. But this was a true test, to say the least, and a test it was. What a matchup. You gotta think John Moxley's gonna be watching backstage, thinking on to himself what great matchup this one was. Man, what a matchup. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after weeks and weeks of not seeing him, we are finally going to be seeing former World Heavyweight Champion Kevin Owens as he is going to be interviewed coming up next. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight here on Halloween Havoc, it is just stirring up because we have tag team action later on tonight as the Lucha Bros are taking on the Hurt Business 2.0 is what MVP is calling them. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to focus more on the fact that the Lucha Bros are going to be making their in-ring debut right here in the WWE and they're going to be going against a team as formidable as the Hurt Business but who can be the newest member? I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, this member of the Bloodline is not looking too good. In the eyes of the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, the big question is, can Solo perfect his test here tonight? Can Solo do what he said to Roman he can do last week? Does Solo have one more chance in him? We're going to find out right here in the main event. It's going to be damn good. I'll see you guys then. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wade Barrett, and I'm backstage with Kevin Owens. Now, Kevin, the big question everybody has in their mind is after your rivalry with Cody Rhodes and after what seems to be a fallout between you and Sami Zayn, what is next for you? What is next for, you know, the next step in the next chapter of the career of Kevin Owens? You want to know what's next for me, Wade? What's next for me is what I should have been going after to begin with, and that's the World Heavyweight Championship. I know Balor's watching very close, and I know that there's a so-called mask man out there terrorizing the Judgment Day. And although I couldn't be any happier that the Judgment Day is getting exactly what they deserve, a part of me feels a little left out of the party. So I'm sending the invitation, Finn Balor. Whether it's Raw, whether it's Mayhem, whether it's on a PLE, how about me and you fight it out for the big gold like we did the first two times that championship was ever defended here in Universe Mode. How about we give the fans what they want? How about we run it back? Because I don't care what kind of a king you have become when I stepped into the ring with you. You were just a self-proclaimed prince that couldn't beat me the two times that you faced me. Everybody wants to talk about Finn Balor beating Cody Rhodes. Everybody wants to talk about Finn Balor beating all these great superstars and cementing his legacy as World Heavyweight Champion. Well, Finn Balor never beat me. I had to get injured. 
for Finn Balor to become world champion. And now that I'm back and my head is clear and it's on straight, I want the exact thing that I should have never lost. I'm coming, Finn. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the commercial break. And oh, 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 we promised tag team action and tag team action. You are getting it is the Lucha Bros. Oh, oh, Pentagon Jr., Ray Phoenix, two of Luchador's finest superstars stepping into the ring here tonight as our crossover begins. Ladies and gentlemen, it was last week on Mayhem when the LWO got their victory against the Guns, and it was Rey Mysterio who walked up to the LWO later that night and basically let them know what it was, let them know, listen, that intensity right there was what I have been wanting to see from you guys. And because of that, here is a reward. That match was a qualifying match. And what that means is that in two weeks time, the LWO are going to be facing off in a number one contenders match. Now being next week. But the big question is, will it be the Lucha Bros or will it be the Hurt Business? 2.0. I don't know ladies and gentlemen, but what I do know is that tonight we are going to be seeing two teams who have absolutely all to gain, but nothing to lose. The Lucha Bros go right back to AEW after this. The Hurt Business, they don't have any momentum to gain. They weren't doing much anyway. So the big question that I have for you guys, the big question that I have for the entire Wrestle Plus universe is who's walking away with the victory here tonight. Oh, 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 you have got to be kidding me! One of the hottest free agents we have just signed! It's Trick Williams! And he, he is the newest member of the Hurt Business! MVP promised he was gonna cook! And cooking he is! Oh man, oh man, I haven't been this excited about the Hurt Business since season one. And this might be the up and coming. This might be the next step. A new step, a step in the right direction when it comes down to the Hurt Business. I'm going to be honest, I thought Bobby Lashley was just going to team up with Cedric. But MVP has something big up his sleeve when it comes to the Hurt Business. And it seems like business has just picked up. Oh, 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 this one's gonna be a damn good one. This Nashville, Tennessee crowd is absolutely off their feet and they're ready for a banger of a tag team matchup. Oh man, oh man, here we go. First time we're gonna be seeing the Luchadors in the ring. First time we're gonna be seeing Trip Williams team up with the Hurt Business and Williams is gonna be starting off here with Pentagon Jr. Very interesting start. And look at this Pentagon now looking to pick up Williams for something big here. Up and down, oh my God. Very exciting matchup all around. And wait a minute. Big kick to the back there. Big leg drop there by Pentagon Jr. And look at Jr. now. Showing off to the crowd. I mean, listen. You want to talk about a team like the Lucha Bros. It's a team who's carried the tag team division all over the world. Everywhere they went, they definitely made sure to show up and show out. And look at this. Trick Williams trying to come with some steam behind him. But wait a minute. Thinks twice about it. Very nice kick there by Pentagon Jr. When it comes to the uh, the differences in Pentagon and Ray Phoenix, they definitely have more of a experience, I'd argue, than the Hurt Business when it comes to tag team wrestling. But the Hurt Business, they've been doing their own things since season one. But this right here is a very a fresh start for them. And wait a minute now, into the covers. This one going to be it here? No. This right here, you can argue, is a, a brand new clean slate for the Hurt Business. Adding in Trick Williams, swapping them out for the old member. I mean, that's got to be good. That's got to be not only good, good mindset, but... Uh, you know, good optimism is there when it comes to MVP. I mean, look at a smile on his face. And look, oh man, Cedric Alexander in the ring now. We've seen Alexander wrestle all over here in season one and two. And what an athlete he is. And wait a minute, now Cedric looks to hit Ray Phoenix with something big here as it's Phoenix. And Alexander in the ring now. Big kick there by Phoenix. Ray Phoenix now going to Pentagon Jr. Seems like the Lucha Bros have been keeping up their uh, the momentum. And oh man, oh. I thought that was a kick there by Pentagon, but it seems like Cedric Alexander moved out of the way, reversed it just in the nick of time, and Alexander catches him. Checks off Pentagon right where he needed to. And wait a minute, Alexander now. Looking to get the new member back in the ring. Looking to get him a little greased up. And wait a minute now. Oh, 
something big there to Pentagon. Pentagon moved out of the way. Trick Williams, not his luck in this matchup. Locking down. Down goes William. And now Williams is down. And Ray Fiend is looking to line him up. Big kicks there. The Lucha Bros have been heavily using those kicks here. And the matchup here tonight into the cover. This one's got to be it. One, no. Cedric Alexander. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. We knew he was going to be there for a tag team partner. That's what you want to see. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't so far, hit that thumbs up button if you've been enjoying the content so far here on the channel. Now, wait a minute now. Look at this. MVP getting in the way here. A MVP sort of uh, uh, distracting the Lucha Bros here tonight and distracting he is. Now, Trick Williams looking to bring the upset here. No. First time we're seeing a lot of offense here by Trick Williams in a matchup here tonight. Williams looks to bring him up. Down goes Phil. No, 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 no. Williams holding his own in this matchup. Not something you see here from Trick Williams very often. And wait a minute now. Trick Williams, very nice. Irish move off the ropes and big kick there. Lays out Phoenix exactly where he needs to be. Two and no. Pentagon Jr. playing a little backup just in case he needed him to. Off the ropes now goes Trick. And Trick drops him. Whoop that Trick indeed. And no. Williams tried to go for it, didn't get all of it this time. Ray Phoenix looking to make the turnaround. Ray Phoenix looking to do something big here. And wait a minute, flips him over, pops up and drops him. Absolutely beautiful work here by the Luchadors. Now, this can go either way. We can either see Lucha versus Lucha next week. Or it could be a rematch from season one, the LWO versus the Hurt Business. Down for the count, no. No, no, no. Man, oh man, what a matchup this is here tonight right here on Monday Night Raw Halloween Havoc. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to go on commercial break, but we will be right back right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, later tonight in our main event, it's going to be a blockbuster one to say the least as Solo Sokoa will be going one-on-one -on -one with Warlow for the first time ever right here in Universe Mode as we are having a seven-week crossover and it's just beginning. Let's do this. Ladies and oh man, beautiful, beautifully done there by uh, Cedric Alexander. But wait a minute, Alexander looking to line up Penta for something big here right off of the commercial break. Looking to line him up easy, does it? Standing muscle buster, but no. Well, I was gonna say, as we just seen over the commercial break, what a main event it's gonna be. As Wardlow set to go against Solo Sokoa for the first time ever here in Universe Mode Blockbuster main event. As Tonight is Solo's true test right after that tribal court. And look at that, Trick Williams taking care of Ray Phoenix. Cedric Alexander taking care of Pentagon to the top. He goes! One, two, no! The Hurt Business were just cleaning up, doing what they had to do. But now look at this, back, 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 drop some. Pentagon Jr. busting out the New Japan moves. And wait a minute. A bit down he goes. Williams gets him. Oh my god. What a match this is. As look at this. Cedric now takes him over. This one is a matchup of matchups to say the least, ladies and gentlemen. As we are coming to you guys tonight with banger after banger after banger. And wait a minute now, look at this. Trick Williams looks to do something big here to Pentagon Jr. But Jr. saying no. Jr. not allowing him to do what he needs to do. And oh my god, big kick there. Big kick there by Penta. Penta now looking to drag him in the middle of the ring. Looking to drag him, his lifeless body. Nowhere for Trick to go. Now lining him up. Penta L0. We're seeing the shades. And we're seeing him. Power Driver! One, two, the nick of time! If it was a definition, Cedric put his face on it! A save by Alexander Williams getting up to his feet, Penta going through! My goodness. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. Wow. I am just... I am just at an awe once again! Flatlined him! No! If it wasn't for Cedric, I think Trick would have been gone a long, long time ago. Trick Williams doing what Trick Williams needs to do and not survive in this match. And look at this now. Pence attacking it. Ray Phoenix as Phoenix has been in this ring for a while. Phoenix might be down. <laughs> what a maneuver. Ray Phoenix is taking Trick Williams to his limit. Look at this. Down goes Williams. Penta back in. Penta in the driver's seat. Penta lining up Williams. Lock in. Loaded. But Cedric. Cedric continues to be that lifeline, the lifeline, let may I add, ladies and gentlemen, that Trick Williams desperately needs. And look at this now, Williams, nowhere to go, nothing to do, but it seems to be trying to find a glimmer, finding a hope of fight in this matchup. Very beautiful work there by Trick Williams, fighting like his heart depends on it. Into the cover, one, no. You had to think that, you had to think that the Lucha Bros were going to be on top of it. Oh my god! Lights out! Down goes the Lucha Bros! Did Trick Williams just lead the Hurt Business to the promised land? Did Trick Williams just lead the Hurt Business down a path? that they never thought that they'd see again. And that's Tag Team Title Gold, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, it is going to be a Season 1 rematch with some flair. It is going to be the Hurt Business 2.0 versus the LWO. A personal indebted rivalry getting renewed the next episode next Monday right here on Raw. It's going to be damn good. What a match. Wise man. Yes, my tribal chief. Make sure things are in order. I want a very close eye on the main event tonight. Okay, my tribal chief, I'll go make preparations right now, but, um, would the Usos be a part of Solo's match tonight? Nah. Nah, see, tonight Solo has to get the job done by himself. He wants a second chance, then he has to prove it to me. Nobody else. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We are finally getting into the matchup that I've personally been looking forward to all night. It's going to be Damian Priest going one-on-one -on -one with L.A. Knight. As Damian Priest and L.A. Knight, they have been uh, having a bit of a back and forth over the last couple of weeks. It all started really towards the lead-up to the Survivor Series pay-per-view when L.A. Knight was set to go one-on-one -on -one with Finn Balor for the World's Heavyweight Championship. But in order for them to get to that matchup, you know, LA Knight had a little bit of help when it came down to Chad Gable in the Alpha Academy. Now, Otis doesn't seem very receptive of the help that LA Knight's been trying to give them. But, you know, after last week, the big question that everybody has in their mind is, is Alpha Academy done? Is Alpha Academy over with? Especially after, you know, Dominic Mysterio and JD, or excuse me, and Damian Priest got the job done last week defeating. I don't know. But the big question is, who was on the level of the Megastar? Oh, 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 here he is. If I, I didn't think Nashville could get any hotter. Ladies and gentlemen, it's LA Knight. And Knight is here for one reason and one reason only. And that's to shut up the dummy known as Damian Priest. As LA Knight and Damian Priest have had a bit of a back and forth within this little rivalry that's been going on when it comes to, you know, LA Knight in the Alpha Academy versus Judgment Day. It's been a little more personal when it comes to Damian Priest and LA Knight as Damian Priest has been embarrassed on multiple occasions by LA Knight 
but this will be the third time that they're stepping into the ring. First time ever was on Mayhem, and it was a damn good matchup as LA Knight and Damian Priest pushed each other to the limit in the main event, but it was LA Knight to persevere, and then second time, it was when Chad Gable answered the call of LA Knight, and it was Gable and Knight versus Damian Priest and Finn Balor, but it was Chad Gable to pin Damian Priest. But that being the second time those two men ever been in the ring together. And tonight looks to be the final night. Damian Priest said last week on Mayhem that he wanted to finally put the LA Knight problem away. And look at this. Damian Priest has nothing, nothing but hate in his heart when it comes down to the megastar. Yeah, oh man. He points, they chant L.A. Knight, yeah, and oh my god. Absolutely flatlined by Damian Priest. I mean, listen, Priest has a lot of pent-up aggression, and I'm not going to lie, Priest has been on a hot streak. Beautiful takedown there by Damian Priest. Like I said it before, I'll say it again, Damian Priest has been on a little bit of a hot streak here, building his name within the Judgment Day, and oh man, now it's L.A. Knight to sit down Damian Priest. And look at that, oh man, referee gets clocked. I don't think LA Knight meant that, but Damian Priest meant that. Using the referee to his advantage, typical Judgment Day tactics. As JD McDonough taking a week off, originally Finn Balor wanted to put JD McDonough off against LA Knight, but Damian Priest said that, listen, he understands that, you know, Damian, oh man, very nice takedown there by Priest. He understands that, you know, JD McDonough is the new guy. He understands that he wants to earn his stripes. But at the same time, when you look at a guy like Damian Priest, Damian Priest said simply, listen, I got to be the one to put this away. I got to be the one to end this rivalry. And that seems to be what he's doing here tonight as he is playing a lot of offense against the megastar here tonight known as L.A. Knight. And, oh, man, Knight saying that this is over. Knight saying he's ready to put this one to bed as he is just throwing in a fury of kicks here to Dam or excuse me, to L.A. Knight. And Dominic in the corner snickering away, snickering away as L.A. Knight down and out. Priest following pursue. And oh man, big punch there by Damian. And oh man, big kick there. Another kick there. Playing a bit of a more of a slower pace here tonight goes Damian Priest. And wait a minute, LA Knight looks to turn the tables. LA Knight looking to turn the tides. And Nashville's into it. Knight turning the tides and Nashville's with it. Into the ring goes Priest. Priest now. Priest now understanding his limitations. And look at this Knight now. Up and down goes Priest. One, two, no. LA Knight trying to put away Damian Priest. Priest kicking out in the nick of time. No, once again. Once again, a big takedown by the Megastar. LA Knight on an absolute hot streak. And oh man, looks to do some damage, but Damian Priest saying no. We knew Damian Priest at some point was going to turn the tides when it comes down to LA Knight. We were just looking on when. And it seems like this is when, oh man, the beginning of the end could be what we see right here on Halloween Havoc. And look at this, Damian Priest saying that this right here is over. And what the hell, what's that on the Titantron? And oh man, what the hell? That got Damian Priest's attention, so did Dominic. What the hell, that masked man once again attacking Finn Balor backstage. And wait a minute, BTF! Knight! Knight with a blood force trauma! Blood for trauma. He wants to live up to the name once again. One, two, three. <laughs> what did we just see? Knight doing what Knight was set out to do, and that's put away the archer of infamy known as Damian Priest. Down goes Priest. All hell, L.A. Knight. The big question is, who can stop the momentum of L.A. Knight? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know, but good job, L.A. Knight. Yeah. After last week, me and Sting, well, we have a lot to get off our mind when it comes down to Samoa Joe. I called my shot for the Intercontinental Championship and now I find myself in a tough situation because Samoa Joe doesn't know how a normal match works. I mean, it makes sense. He is stupid, but come on. You want to choke out me? Sure, fine. I don't give a damn, but you choke out Sting? 
You choke out an icon? The icon? <laughs> Joe, you done stepped in a world of shit that you can't handle. Because my name's Darby Allen. And I don't just bring extreme wrestling. I am extreme wrestling. And I don't care whether it's on Monday nights or Friday nights. You're gonna get your ass handed to you. One way or another. I'm your new nightmare, Joe. Me. Hey, listen, guys, can I get a word real quick? I think it's pretty obvious that Samoa Joe is enemy number one around here. After attacking Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish isn't going to let it slide. Bobby Fish isn't going to let a lot of things slide. So if I was you guys way in order for things to work out for us, you know what? How about this? I'm a fair man. I'm a champion, and I'm a champion of a championship that you want. You don't even have to give me an answer. Show me what your actions this week, Friday, Bobby Fish is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Samoa Joe. Fish promised the Undisputed Era that he was going to get rid of Samoa Joe. Let him get rid of Samoa Joe. And you get an Intercontinental Championship match. Hey, kid, good match tonight, huh? You really went out there and showed Claudio. Now that, that was what the Shield wanted to see. We want to put you to a test tonight. And I can say that you passed. Nobody survives in the ring like you survive with Claudio tonight. Claudio is known as our muscle for a reason. The man hits hard and he hits fast. And that's something that we, we didn't know if you had it. But we see at the end of tonight, you got it. So rest up easy, kid. Because the shield, the shield has a lot of work to do with you. The big question is, do you want that? I mean, that sounds great, but at the end of the day, I am an AEW guy. I mean... What is Tony going to think about that? You let me and Rollins take care of that. They don't call him an architect for no reason. Coming up next is what everybody's been waiting for all night. It's finally going to be the main event. And it's going to be damn good as these two blockbuster giants meet in the ring for the first time. It's Wardlow and Solo Sokoa. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here and we are set to hear from the OC as the OC are finally back. And they seem to be better than ever as the OC were taken out a couple of weeks ago by the guns and the help of Drakkar Juice Robinson and the man himself, Jay White. But last week, AJ Styles put Juice Robinson to bed after hitting him with a Styles Clash through the announce table and winning the main event matchup. And now Styles looks to continue his career here in the WWE and just push forward. And you can't blame him, but he, I don't think that it's over when it comes to this war. So the Bullet Club Gold wants to play games, huh? Well, I like games. Oh, man, oh, man. No, 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 I, I love games. You want to play games, Jay White? You want to challenge me to a match at Mayhem? You want to blindside me? Well, you're on. AJ Styles versus Jay White. One-on-one -on -one this Friday on Mayhem. But listen, I'm telling you one thing. I'm not that kid you faced all those years ago in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I am phenomenal. And I am going to kick your head and put it right into the mat. Just like I hit your bestie over there, Rock Car Juice Robinson, last week. And I put his ass through the announce table, you see, because I'm phenomenal. And I do not just call that as a name, I wear it on my sleeve and I represent it each and every single time I step into the ring. And now that my boys are back and that we're better in health, I have a challenge for you. I'll take you on this Friday, but if I win, if I beat you this Friday on Mayhem, then I, along with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, take on you or Juice or whoever and however you want to mix it up but the three of us want to take on the three of you and any combination that you're willing to bring it and we want to take you guys on on a grand stage known as clash of the castle what do you say jay do you accept ho ho aj styles we've been waiting for this I have no words for you. You're on. What? Can somebody make this official, please? What? 
Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Pearce and William Regal are bringing the heat for this Friday on Mayhem because in your main event, it's going to be World Heavyweight Champion Finn Balor going one-on-one -on -one with AEW's very own Swerve Strickland as this is not Strickland's debut on Mayhem. He has wrestled here before in Universe Mode and he is going to be making his return, but this time as a member of AEW to go one-on-one -on -one with the World Heavyweight Champion himself, Finn Balor. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been waiting to say this all night. It's time for the main event. Solo Warlow one on one. Oh, what? New look by Solo. He seems like this man is wearing the bloodline stripes on his chest. As last week, Solo Sokoa stood face to face with Roman Reigns. And it seemed like it was going to be Roman booting Solo out. But it was not that, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what it was. It was Solo Sokoa making that name for himself. Making that a case for himself. And he basically said, give me two weeks, my tribal chief. Give me a couple of weeks to show you that I can be an asset to the bloodline. And tonight... Solo is set to go one on one with Wardlow in this main event and beating a monster like Wardlow. Now that will show that you are an asset to the bloodline. Tonight is a test for Solo Sokoa. The big question is can the enforcer enforce here tonight? I don't know. We're going to find out. And oh man, oh man, we have been waiting for this one for a very long time, even over in his career for the WWE. A lot of people would like to see him here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the big man, Wardlow. And Wardlow is here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to shut the mouth of Solo Sokoa as Sokoa and Wardlow have never met each other here in the WWE before but a lot of similarities have been thrown those two men's way but tonight is the night that we're gonna see if the, the enforcer of the bloodline or if he's still in the bloodline Solo Sokoa we're gonna see if he can get the job done against a man who has been on a path of vengeance as of late the man who owns the power bombs of symphonies this ladies and gentlemen this is a dangerous man, a man only known as Wardlow. And the man that we saw kick off Raw earlier tonight, MJF. Now I think he could tell us all about Wardlow. All about the kind of superstar that he is. The kind of danger that he brings in the ring when he steps into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, this one is going to be hard hitting to say the least. This one is going to be dangerous. But what we can promise you guys is this one is going to be a blockbuster main event. As these two men are finally set to go one-on-one -on -one. ever since the matchup was announced for Halloween Havoc. The entire Raw and Mayhem roster stood up. They were ecstatic. They were surprised. And we are finally going to be seeing the matchup go down right here, right now. As it's going to be very interesting to see who stays after this big crossover. I know a lot of people might may have not even been thinking that. But it could very well damn happen. But wait a minute. Here we go. It finally goes down. Wardlow versus Solo for your main event of Halloween Havoc. And as Wardlow shows off, Solo not even worried, not even phased by the big man known as Wardlow. But listen, Wardlow compared to Solo is a, is a very much bigger guy. But look at this, Solo bringing the fight. Big Samoa headbutt there. Quick cover here by Solo Sokoa. You see the urgency in the eyes of Solo. After last week's tribal course, Solo... Is on a mission here tonight. And wait a minute, big clothesline there. No, nice reversal there by the big man Wardlow. And oh man, sidewalk slam over and over again on the knee and just tossing Solo Sokoa. That's not something I thought we'd see here tonight. Big clothesline there by Wardlow. It's been very, very uh, a rare appearance if you see somebody really dominate Solo the way Wardlow is. And this matchup just started. And look at both of these men backing away. Solo getting angry. Feeling like Wardlow's a, a toying with them, playing with them a little bit, and I can't argue it. Wardlow knows exactly what he's doing, and look at that, a headbutt of his own. Wardlow knows exactly what he's doing, and Wardlow now belly to belly. Down goes Solo into the cover. Is this one going to be in here? Middle of the ring, nowhere to go, no. Kick out there by Solo. Solo trying to fight back. I mean, listen, ladies and gentlemen, the matchup just started. But you see, you, you see the dominance being shown on display of what Wardlow can do. He's a dangerous superstar, and there's a reason. There's a reason why we've never seen him here. 
Another belly to belly, this time on the outside. One of the hardest structures of the arena. Wait a minute now, Wardlow. Wardlow, what is he doing here? No. Toya with Solo. And look at this. Solo just seems distraught at what he's seeing right now. Solo seems a, a bit surprised at what's going on. We don't see Solo like this. And oh man, back outside the ring. Usually Solo is in control. Solo capacitates and, and he takes out his opponents. But tonight we're seeing something completely different. And wait a minute now, Solo makes me eat my words there. Big Samoan headbutt looks to take down Wardlow exactly where he stands. And a big takedown there. And Solo's feeling the momentum. But if I'm Solo, I'm staying on top of it. Because look at that. Look how quick Wardlow just got up. Swift and easy. Down goes Solo. And once again, a big back body drop. Wardlow now calling up Solo for a spine buster. Man, oh man, Solo in trouble as Wardlow seems to be that number for Solo. And wait a minute, power bomb! And I think we're getting the symphony. Yes, we are. Three into the cover. One, two, and no. And as Solo kicks out, we're gonna have to go on commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. But we will be right back. As announced earlier this week on the channel, AJ Styles, John Moxley, Johnny Gargano, and Jay White will be in fatal four-way action for the Money in the Bank contract, and it all goes down next Monday right here on Raw, 6 p.m. It's going to be good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the commercial break, and over the commercial break, things seem to have uh, spilled to the outside, but look at this, Solo still trying to fight out of the clutches of Wardlow, and oh, once again... Once again, Solo having an answer for something big. Warlow's trying to do suplex there by Solo. Solo now looking to bring him into the ring. And if I'm Solo, I'm looking to clean up real quick. Because, oh man, Warlow's not going to be one to go down easy. Wait a minute. Spike there by Solo. Spike by Solo. Two and no. Oh my goodness. Wardlow kicks out of the spike. But once again, oh man, he wants it again, but Wardlow said no. Wardlow said no. And oh man, overhead? Overhead, no, this time Wardlow. Wardlow, this time Wardlow, the one having to play a little bit defense. But no, I ate my words going on the offense again. Overhead, puts him up on the shoulders like he's lightweight. F5. One, two, what? Wardlow just defeated Solo. What just happened? What just happened? Well, there's been a lot of chatter that WWE's been going more on the side of wins than AEW. This will shut a lot of people up. But this will also raise a lot of questions for our tribal chief because I got a feeling he's not going to let Solo stand on this one much longer as Solo had his first test and it fell short. But ladies and gentlemen, this Friday, it's going to be a damn good main event as Swerve Strickland is going to be coming back here to the WWE to take on Finn Balor. And also, ladies and gentlemen, after last week, after seeing Samoa Joe cause the carnage that he has been causing to the Undisputed Era, we're going to see Bobby Fish try to shut him up. It's going to be Striker versus the Samoan Submission Machine right here on Friday nights and that's not all ladies and gentlemen this one is a dream match that can main event any pay-per-view in my opinion but it's gonna be right on the kickoff of mayhem it's gonna be jay white going one-on-one -on -one with the phenomenal one aj styles and ladies and gentlemen this one's gonna be damn good it's gonna be the queen charlotte flair going one-on-one -on -one with aw women's world champion soraya as soraya has been playing a lot with the numbers game. Is that going to be a factor with Charlotte? Find out this Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for more. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys over on the channel later. Peace.